Step 1 of the Sugiyama algorithm deals with the breaking of cycles. So we take as input the directed graph and we try to find some edges that if we revert them, then we get an acyclic graph. The approach we want to use is, we want to find a minimum set, E star of edges, which are not upwards. Then we want to remove them and insert the reversed edges. This formulates the problem minimum feedback arc set or FAS. So for a directed graph, we want to find a minimum set E star so that G minus E star is acyclic. But this only means that if we remove those, then we get an acyclic graph. Instead, we also want to insert the reversed edges again. And that's the problem minimum feedback set. So we not only want G minus E star to be acyclic, but G minus E star plus E R star. So the edges are reversed. In the exercise sheet, you will show that a solution for minimum feedback arc set is also a solution to minimum feedback set. However, the problem is that this is in general MP-hard, so we cannot expect that we can find a good solution efficiently. Instead, I will show you two heuristics that can get some guarantees on how many edges we have to revert. The first one is by Berger and Shoah from 1990. Consider a single vertex V. There are some outgoing edges, the orange ones, and there are some incoming edges, the purple ones. This defines the neighborhood of V, and the neighborhood of V is a union of the outgoing and the incoming neighbors. Now in this algorithm, we want to greedily pick vertices and only select the outgoing or the incoming edges for this vertex. So we take our digraph and we want to pick a set of edges. If we revert it, then we get a acyclic graph. To do that, we go through the vertices in some arbitrary order. And for each of those, we compare, do we have more outgoing or more incoming edges? If we have more outgoing edges, then we pick all the outgoing edges and add them to our set E prime. Otherwise, we take all the incoming edges and add them to E prime. And then we remove the vertex and its neighborhood from G and we continue. It's easy to see that this creates a directed acyclic graph. This vertex, the first purple one we choose only has incoming edges and further purple ones can only have outgoing edges to vertices we chose earlier. This means that even if we look at the edges that we removed, we get a feedback set. To do that, consider the order in which we pick the vertices. Let's say we first pick an orange one, this only has outgoing edges. So let's place it here and say all the edges that are outgoing go to the right. Then if we pick another one, it can have outgoing edges that we pick here, and it can have incoming edges from the left from vertices picked earlier. For the purple one, the first one we put all the way to the right. So we only chose incoming edges, then they will all come from the left, if all these vertices and the future vertices will be to the left of it. And similarly, the other purple ones only have outgoing edges to the right. So just looking at the edges we picked here, it's clear to see that we have some order on the vertices and all edges are directed from left to right. Furthermore, if we look at the edges that we removed, those all were directed from right to left by exactly the same argument, but reversed. So all the edges we remove for the purple ones, if we reverse them, they will also be directed from left to right. And the purple ones, if we reverse them, they will be directed from left to right. So every edge is directed from left to right here. That means we cannot have a cycle. So we have an acyclic graph here, but even with the reverted ones, we still have an acyclic graph. So we have a feedback set. How much time does this algorithm take? 
Well, we look at every vertex, and for every vertex, we look at all of its neighbors. So it takes order of n plus m time. Can you find a quality guarantee? So how many edges do we at least have in E prime? Since in every step we take at least half of the remaining edges, we pick also at least half of the total edges. So we can get a feedback set that has at least half of the edges in linear time, time linear in the number of edges. That's already nice, we have some guarantee, we at least can find some feedback set, but we can still do better with a slightly more involved heuristic by Eads, Lynn and Smith from 1993. Here they do the following. We again pick a set of edges E prime and we start with the empty set. Now, as long as there is some sink, so a vertex that only has incoming edges, we take all of these incoming edges and add them to E prime and then remove the vertex and its neighborhood from the graph. So in this example here, we have a sink, this only has incoming edges, so we pick all of those and add them to E prime and then remove the stuff. Now this is a sink, so we can pick this edge, add it to E prime and remove the vertex. This is a sink, so we can add these two edges to E prime. And now this is a sink, so we can add this edge to E prime. Now there are no sinks left. So what we do next is that we remove all the isolated vertices. That's those vertices like this one here that have no edges left. Now we don't have a sink, we don't have isolated vertices, but we might still have sources. So we do exactly the same for them. We pick all the edges that are at a source and add them to E prime. For example, here we have a source. We can pick both of these edges and we add them. Now in this graph, neither a source nor a sink is left. So what we do now is that we don't pick any vertex, but we pick the vertex such that the number of outgoing edges minus the number of incoming edges is maximal. And that in, we have, for example, here, this is two outgoing and one incoming edge. You could also pick this vertex with three outgoing, two incoming edges. And then we pick all the outgoing ones. Now we take this vertex, we add these two edges to E prime, and we remove the incoming one. Now again, we own, don't have any sources or sinks, so we pick the one with the most outgoing minus incoming. They have, all have even numbers, so let's pick this one here. We take these two outgoing ones and remove these. And now this is a sink, so we can pick its edge. This is a sink, so we can pick its edge. And these two are isolated vertices. And we're done. We processed all the edges. And again, if we reverse these edges, then we still have an acyclic graph. It's exactly the same argument as in heuristic one. The only difference is that now we are much smarter in the order in which we choose vertices. In heuristic one, we picked a random order, and now we pick the vertices smartly. So we pick those that only have incoming or only outgoing or where this is maximized. And the running time is exactly the same as before. We can, with a pre-processing, just count for every vertex how many outgoing edges, how many incoming edges do we have. And then whenever we remove edges, we can update those numbers easily. And then we can maintain a list of sinks, a list of sources, and some sorted list here that we can update all the time. And that's fine. Why is it that we can store those sorted in a list? Well, what's the largest number we can have here? That's n minus 1. So we can use something like counting sort. We can, or bucket sort, or whatever you want. We have at most n buckets that we place those vertices in, and every time we just put it in an earlier bucket, and then we can find the next one efficiently. And this algorithm now gives us a slightly better quality guarantee. That's not that easy to see, but we have at least half of the edges plus number of vertices divided by six.